What's up, fellas? In the second video of the day, we're going to be talking about a Bradley Beal trade. Some of you are probably thinking, what in the world? What is happening? Why are we talking about a Bradley Beal trade? It's it's April, Tuck. We're, we're going up towards the playoffs. The Wizards are not super relevant right now. What are you talking about? Um, I, I've had this, this video idea in my notes for a while. I've kind of touched on this topic in the past and kind of what I think the Bradley Beal trade plan is. And I kind of want to go ahead and expand on that right now. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the first video of the day. But really quickly, before we get started, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. I told you guys about their products before, and I've been using them for over a year now. And there's truly no better all-in-one men's grooming solution than the Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, part of the performance package from Manscaped, is a rechargeable, cordless, water-resistant trimmer that's truly a game-changer for male hygiene, and it goes to a good cause as well. As every purchase at Manscaped.com goes towards contributions to the Testicular Cancer Society. Together, TCS and Manscaped are committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35 and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer. So if you're looking for a men's grooming solution and you want to support a good cause, you can go to manscaped.com and type in my code SPORTING20 at checkout for 20% off as well as free international shipping. Again, that's code SPORTING20 at manscaped.com. And thank you again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here's the thing. A Bradley Beal trade is going to happen. It's April 7th right now. If a year from now, one calendar year from now, Bradley Beal is still on the Washington Wizards roster, I'd be pretty shocked. I really would. I, I don't think that there's any scenario in which this guy continues to say, hey, I'm committed to Washington. I want to stay. I appreciate and I respect the fact that he said that in the past. I quite simply don't think it's the case. Here's what I think is happening with a Bradley Beal trade. And again, I've kind of touched on this a little bit in the past. The Wizards suck. They're not any good. Playing with Westbrook isn't any fun. And Bradley Beal has to be aware of this. He has to be aware of the fact that he has a handful of years left in his prime. He's on a team with no future. He's on a team that does not have anything remotely close to a championship ceiling, championship potential. And he has the opportunity to ask out in a way in which he has all the leverage. And I think that's what all of this is pointing to. When we get into the 2021 offseason, Bradley Beal will essentially be an impending free agent. He'll have a, a, a year of his contract left for that upcoming season, 21-22, and then a player option for the summer of 2022. The reason that that's critical is twofold. One, we know that he signed the, you know, the mini extension not too long ago. He wanted to get his money, and I fully respect that, by the way. Go and get your money. But it was pretty clear at the time that even, even though he can say publicly, I'm committed to Washington, he was kind of maneuvering for a potential move down the road. Wanted to get his money from his incumbent team. And then the summer of 2022 was going to be, you know, kind of the Bradley Beal summer, right? The second part of this is waiting until now, rather than asking for a trade of the deadline, asking for a trade last off season, allows him all the leverage in the situation. It's not enough anymore in the NBA to ask for a trade in a situation in which you don't have an ability to steer where you want to go. Just ask John Wall. Ending up in Houston, I'm sure that is not where he wants to be right now. This guy that asked for a trade uh, right before being moved in exchange for Russell Westbrook. Same thing with Russ. Probably does not want to be in Washington right now either. Not that Houston seems all that enticing right now anyway. So what stars are learning is that if you ask for a trade in the proper time, you have a lot of control over where you end up going. Here's why. If you are an impending free agent, if you are a guy that can quite literally go anywhere you want to in free agency a year after being traded for, aka Kawhi Leonard, you know, when he went to Toronto, aka this Bradley Beal situation, you basically by default can shorten the list down to as few as two teams as we saw with James Harden in terms of your desire to go one place to another. So what Bradley Beal will start doing right now is they'll start putting out feelers to teams. Hey, just so you know, I'm probably going to ask out this offseason. Get your assets together. Make sure you're not giving away picks. Make sure you're not giving away young players. If you want me, kind of start getting your ducks in a row, right? And then in the offseason, he requests a trade while he only has basically one year left on his deal. And what that allows him to do is he can tell teams, hey, I do or I do not want to re-sign with you in the offseason. There could be Toronto could be interested in going out and trading for Bradley Beal, right? But if Beal says to them, yeah, I'm not interested. I don't want to be with the Raptors. I'm not going to sign with y'all long term. The Raptors might still try and go get him, right? They did it with Kawhi, but their offer is probably going to be less than what any other team would offer that gets an indication from Bradley Beal that he would re-sign with them and he would stay with them. So by deep just by default, 
he can just say, hey, you know what? I want to go here. I don't want to go here. And the team that he wants to go to is going to be much more willing to give up significant assets than the team that he doesn't want to go to. And all of a sudden, you get to a situation where there are two, three, four teams bidding for Bradley Beal, and all of them, all of them are places that he wants to go to. And I think that is why, one, we haven't seen the trade yet, and two, he's going to ask for one this offseason or prior to next season's trade deadline. It's almost a guarantee. I can't see a situation, unless Bradley Beal is truly the most loyal player in the NBA and increasingly uh, in a league that increasingly players are jumping from team to team, unless he is the most loyal player in NBA history, I cannot see a situation in which he looks at this, has free agency staring him in the face and says, you know what? I want to stay in Washington. This is It's not like this is a Damian Lillard situation where you know Dame has had some playoff success and they go to the playoffs relatively consistently and he can say everything he wants to publicly about one to stay with this team and I believe him that situation is completely different than winning 20 games every year in the Eastern Conference with very very little ceiling or upside and an organization and a franchise you don't have confidence in there's no way that Bradley Beal looks at what's happening around the league and all these other guys picking where they want to go and playing on these awesome teams and having a ton of success and being incredibly happy and then looks at his situation in Washington and decides that he would rather stay with the Wizards. There, there's almost a 0% chance in my mind that that is the way that he evaluates the situation. And so ultimately, we're going to get to the off season, 2021. We're going to get to the trade deadline in 2022. And Bradley Beal is going to be moved in one of those situations. I, I couldn't tell you which teams it's going to be to because I don't know which teams he wants to be traded to. But I can promise you that in this era of the NBA, he's probably going to get his way because of how the rules work, because of how free agency works, because of how these players have learned to manipulate the system. And manipulate has a negative connotation typically. I'm not using it in that sense here. I, I, I advocate for players to be able to do whatever they want. It makes the league more fun for me personally. It creates great content for me personally. And I would rather see guys on good teams playing together than wasting away in Washington on a franchise that just to be clear, at no point has deserved the level of talent that Bradley Beal has brought to the table for the last two years because they've continually screwed it up. Yes, there's been some injury stuff, but it's not like this is an organization that historically, or within the last 10 years, or within the last five years, or within the last two years, has shown an ability to build a highly competent championship level basketball team. And quite frankly, players like Bradley Beal deserve to be with a franchise that knows how to put together a highly competent championship level basketball team. So I don't blame him at all for doing it this way. And I think it's exactly how it's going to break down. He's going to get his money again, all the respect in the world. And then he's going to put himself in a situation where he can say, I want to go here, here, or here. You three teams, you know, figure out how you're going to bid. I, I don't really care which one I go to. I'm happy in either situation. No, I'm not going to Toronto. No, I'm not going to Boston. No, I'm not going here. And those teams at their own risk can still put up a lot of assets and go out and get him if they want to. Just ask the Toronto Raptors when they traded for Kawhi Leonard. They had no indication from Kawhi that he was going to end up staying. And at the time, I'm sure when Kawhi got traded, he was thinking, I'm going to play this year out, but I'm probably not going to stay in Toronto. And only the fact that they won the title even made it somewhat of a decision for him. And some franchises are willing to make that move and take that risk. And for Toronto specifically, it's probably the greatest trade in NBA history because it led directly to a title. But typically, you're not dealing with a situation like the Kawhi thing where he's hurt and his value is lowered and in this Beal situation specifically there are going to be teams that are going to be willing to give up especially given the precedent that we've seen recently in terms of how many draft picks and swaps you're willing to give up there are going to be teams that are going to be willing to give up basically everything to get Bradley Beal assuming they have other stars to pair with him and teams that think it's just going to be a rental are just simply not going to be able to match that the other part of this too is I'm sure there's Thunder fans. I'm sure there's Pelicans fans watching this thinking, man, we're going to get our shot at a star when Bradley Beal requests a trade. We've got all these picks. Yeah, if he doesn't want to go there, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does. You can still trade for him, but there's no guarantee that he's going to stay. So again, that's where the leverage comes in. That's where his ability to, to potentially, you know, kind of decide where he wants to go ultimately comes into play here. Just because you have the picks, just because you have the assets does not guarantee you you know, top of the pecking order for a star anymore, assuming that a star like Bradley Beal has a preference on where he wants to go, which I would imagine that he would. As of right now, it is wildly difficult to predict where exactly Beal would go. Just from a preference standpoint, um, you know, some of the some of the bigger teams are kind of already taken out of the equation here. Um, you know, Miami, in my opinion, would be difficult. The Lakers, of course, would be difficult. The Clippers would be nearly impossible. Uh, the one team that kind of comes to mind here 
would be New York, would be the Knicks. The problem is you don't have like another star there that you're really going to. So, it, you know, if they were able to maybe, you know, get a guy in free agency and then bring in Beal, that would be a bit more feasible. But in terms of some of the typical, you know, I want to go here and play, uh, the Knicks are kind of at the top of the list right now. But ultimately, team t situations are going to develop. Teams are going to come to the, you know, come to the table and say, hey, we want Bradley Beal. We're going to be able to do this, 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 and this, because he's going to be someone that a lot of teams are going to want to bring in. So I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. This offseason or prior to the next trade deadline, Bradley Beal will be on a different team. And by the way, Washington fans, you should honestly be advocating for it. I know Bradley Beal is an awesome player, but you need a reset. Your team's going nowhere. You need the crazy amount of assets you're going to get in exchange for a Beal trade. At least I would hope you get in exchange for him, assuming your front office does his job correctly. You need the picks. You need the young players. You need all that stuff to reset. It's not the end of the world for your franchise. And honestly, it's something that you need to do. And ultimately, it's something that I would expect to happen again within the next, um, you know, less than a year or so. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the second video of the day. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.